light slight. Ugh. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, hello, my name is Leanne and thank you for stopping by. So a couple of things, if you hear noise in the background, I apologize. I have a fan going because it is hot as Hades here today. It decided to suddenly become 90 degrees here in New York and I am suffocating slowly and painfully. I did not do a month in review for April because things just got away with me and May is almost over. It's Memorial Day weekend. I hope you are remembering those who gave some and some who gave all, but I also do hope you are enjoying the holiday as well. So I thought I would combine two months and I'm not even including all of the products that I thought I would because I have a lot of products to talk about. So before we get started, I want to tell you the first three products I am talking about are things that were sent to me. Absolutely, positively not being sponsored, not being paid. I do not make a commission off of them if you buy them. I think they just sent them to me so I could review them, but I will link them down below. I might have a discount coupon for you. Again, I am not making money off of that discount. Also, thank you to the companies who did send me these products. It is greatly appreciated. I do enjoy trying new products and letting you guys know if they are worth your money. Now, this one I'm going to... Not their money, but your money. <laughs> this is the first thing I want to talk about. is a beauty sponge that I used in my most recent um, Get Ready With Me that I did. I don't even think that one's up yet, so you'll hear me talk about it there as well. But this is just a beauty sponge. It is $5.99, sold on Amazon. I am very skeptical about my sponges. I There's a lot of sponges I don't like. Some of the ones that I bought in TJ Maxx were just too hard. It's like, I'm like Goldilocks. Do you know what I mean? I am so surprised at how good this sponge is at $5.99. It's, it's awesome. It is grows to be quite big. It is dirty, I said, because I've been using it all every day. I have replaced it with my Real Technique sponge. Don't get me wrong, I still like that sponge. I still like my L'Oreal sponge, and of course, I kind of like the Beauty Blender, but I am so shocked at how good this sponge is. As I said, it is $5.99, and I personally will be going and ordering a bunch of these myself. It is soft, just soft enough. It makes my makeup go on really, really well, and I was shocked as all heck, let me tell you. So, this is a good one. Not lying to you. The next product was from the same company that they sent me, and this is the cutest little thing I've ever seen. It is a makeup bag, and it is a little travel one. Granted, can you fit everything? No, but you can actually fit a small palette in here. When you open up the one side, it has a mesh zipper that I just closed instead of opened that you can fit some smaller items in here it does have a little tiny brush holder here i don't know if i would use it for my brushes because i carry a lot more brushes than this but i think in a pinch it would be great and of course it does have the plastic flap to uh, protect them then when you open up the other side oh by the way that little beauty sponge came in this adorable little plastic container they're the cutest thing, so it kind of arrivals or mimics the beauty blender. I thought this was a great idea. Anyway, on the other side, you do have another pocket in here without a zipper. It has mesh, and then this is pretty deep. You could fit a small palette in here and some other things. Granted, it's not for um, huge overnight trips, but you know, even to put this in your just bag or whatever would be great. It has a little handle that you can carry, and it's cute. It's black. It's like a satiny material. Material, and it's quilted and I thought it was adorable now silly me I thought it was going to be much much larger but all of the pictures when you there's like 10 pictures and they do actually show the size because they show somebody holding it like this but that was my fault for not thoroughly going through the pictures it was $11.99 and I paid more than that for some makeup bags before so I think it's adorable and you know I don't go anywhere as we all know but I would purchase this if I either saw it in a store or saw it online or something and it's just cute now also I did want to speak to the beauty blender I've only had it and been using it for about 
two weeks, I think. So I can't speak to how it is go long it's going to last. Like, you know how the beauty blenders fall apart and get tears in them quickly? I've washed it every single day for those past two weeks, and nothing has happened to it. I can tell you that. But as far as the longevity of how long of a use you're going to get out of it, that I can't speak to. But again, it's $5.99. So back to this. I think it's adorable. I would definitely purchase it if I saw it, if I was in need of something. And I... I like it. The other company that contacted me was Aveline Razor. And I was like, okay, that would fit into my channel. I'd be interested to try it. And it's a new type of razor. They sent me some promotional materials. It is actually going to be available in August and it is on AvalineRazor.com. But it is a razor that is tiny and travel friendly. And you're supposed to slide it onto there and it has a little pinky rest right here that you put your pinky on and you are supposed to then glide the razor up your leg it has double razor blades and it has a very nice pivoting head and then it has these little balls that move and slide across your leg for a nice smooth shave now i will say this i tried it like this and this wasn't very, wasn't overly comfortable for me. I think if you got used to it, it could be interesting and it could be beneficial, but I just found it awkward for me in the shower. That was my personal experience. The way I use it is I turn it this way and I put my finger, whoops, there is a hair, I'm sorry. I put it this way and I put my finger this way on it. And I hold it like this, and I use it in the regular fashion of going up this way. And I've been using this razor basically every other day. I don't shave my legs every day because I don't have anybody to impress. And I really like this. I'm, like, shocked that I really, really like this razor. I'm also going to link this down below. It is not very expensive. I do not have the price in front of me, but I will put the price on the screen. It came in this adorable little box like this, and then they are showing you how you are supposed to use it. You can get refill heads for it, which I absolutely love. They also sent me two little samples of, okay, it's, I never really read the name of it, to be honest with you, but it's, it's called head lube. Um, and this is actually, I didn't use this one. This is the lotion, I guess, for guys who shave their heads and stuff like that. But they did also send me a little baby sample of their shaving cream. It's a, it's a good shaving cream. It's a moisturizing one. It's more of a lotion shaving cream. It's not a foamy type. And I liked it. I, I, I don't think I'm going to use um, this for my head. I might try it as just, just a lotion, but head lube is, yeah, the name. I really like it. I will be buying it again personally. And, you know, I like to share things with you guys that I'm being honest about and I know we're good. And, like, I know that if somebody purchased it knowing that I reviewed it, they wouldn't be disappointed. And my parents are watching a war movie. Sorry about that. So those are the first three products, not sponsored, not being paid. They just happen to be three products that were sent to me that I really liked and I wanted to let you guys know about. I need some coffee, yes. Who else drinks coffee, hot coffee, when it's 90-something degrees out? Am I the only crazy one? I don't know. Okay, so let's get down to some things that I actually do like. The first one is from, it's, that we got in one of our boxes. It's Gold Faden. I think it's Gold Faden. I don't know if it's Fadden Faden. Anyway, it is the Bright Eyes eye cream. <laughs> I researched and looked into the ingredients. They are... They're good ingredients, and I have to tell you that on combination of this and something else I've been using, this is very, very moisturized. It's a very, very thick cream. Let me just show you. The only thing is the squeaks. I mean, which is no big deal, but it's so funny when you, when you, when you depress the, the top of it. It's a very thick emollient cream. I do have to wait and let this soak under my eyes before I go in with my concealer or else like the concealer will move around but I really like it and I am going to continue to use it for sure sticking to the moisturizer category this is the wrinkle revenge from derma doctor this has some darn good ingredients in it and I've been using it sporadically like switching it off I want to 
give this a dedicated one month time frame to review because I was going over the ingredients and again and I was like that's got some good ingredients so again it's a nice thick cream it has maybe the slightest slightest light scent to it nothing offensive it does have fragrance in it I will say that because I did look it up but it's really nice and the good thing is it's not I can use it in the summertime because it's not that heavy greasy type of moisturizer which in the wintertime I love this soaks into the skin nicely and then your skin just feels smooth but it doesn't have that oil slick on top of it it is a pricey moisturizer I'm not going to deny it is fifty seven dollars but I really like it. Derma Doctor also happens to make the KP Duty, which I love for the keratosis pilaris that I get or the chicken bumps that I get on the back of my arms. That is miracle, miracle stuff. All it is basically is AHAs and BHAs that um, exfoliate the skin on the back of your arms because a regular moisturizer is not going to break down that uh, built up skin. So I happen to like them. Not every single product has the best ingredients, but this one is fabulous. Keeping in theme with skin, this is the Strifectin Advanced Glow Tri-Phase Daily Glow Toner. This one, as you can see, the products separate because it has a slightly oily base. And that is one thing I'm going to tell you that this toner, you're not going to feel that dry feeling when you put it on your face. It does not have alcohol in it. It has a slightly oily texture, which you have dry skin, you will absolutely adore. You're, you have a, a, a light, slight, light, slight? Ugh. You have a slight, nice, slip feeling on your skin after you use this. This does have wonderful ingredients in it. It has ingredients that are going to chemically exfoliate your skin. You can use this during the day. And again, it's not a moisture, a toner rather, that's going to leave your skin feeling tight. But if you have oily skin, I don't know if this one is going to be for you only because you may not like that feeling on your skin. But as you can see, I am moving through this quite rapidly because I use it on the daily. I use this one during the day and my Pixie Glow Tonic at night and and I love this stuff and it's completely non-irritating to your skin. Another one that I don't want to like but I do like is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I love this stuff. If you like the scent of watermelon, it has a strong but not sickeningly sweet scent to it. It again is one that you have to mix up for the ingredients. I think the packaging is innovative. You do get twice the amount in here that you're getting in the Tatcha. I believe this one is 38 bucks. This one does not shoot you in the face. It is a very, very fine mist. So I hold it personally close to my face. If you do not like face mists at all, you might want to hold it further away. I think it melts in my powders very nicely. It is refreshing during the day. I just found a couple at TJ Maxx. You will be seeing that haul very, very soon that I'm interested in trying because they look so promising. And of course, they were, you know, so much cheaper. But for a face mist, I really like this. Again, no alcohol, good ingredients. I like it. I have a lot of makeup products, as you've seen. I've gotten a lot of makeup between the hauls and my subscription boxes, and I just want to talk about some of those that I like. I'm saving all the things that I'm not so thrilled about till the end. So let's just talk about some lippies for a minute. We got this Appeal Cosmetics Holographic, it is not holographic, lip gloss in, oh, one of our subscription boxes. I was intrigued by the cap. I really like this and I like it because not for the color that it gives it does have a slight little sparkle to your lips so you can wear it by itself or just a little bit of sparkle but not that heavy glitter sparkle just like a bit of a gleam if you can say like a glowiness so it doesn't really show up you're not it doesn't feel gritty or anything like that you can see it's just see that it just gives like that really pretty subtle glow to it. What I do like is the slip that it has. I love the feeling of this on my lips. It almost feels like it has a silicone slip to it, but it, it kind of 
seals in moisture onto your lips and it feels so good and you can see I've been using quite a bit because I'm like down to half the tube I basically wear this and a couple of the other ones every day I think it's overpriced I would not pay the $20 full price for this but I'm glad that I have it and I do really like it another one on those same lines with that same wonderful slip to it is from from Winky Lux it is their glazed lip I got this as a sample again it's got that little bit of sparkle to it it is clear but this one has more of a pinky shift to it so you do get a little bit more color on your lips when you use it this has that same awesome feeling on your lips your lips don't feel dry they don't feel sticky at all and when you rub your lips together they just feel smooth and have that nice awesome slip and that's why i've been using this one like a ton as well as a matter of fact I need to put this on. That is so much better. As you can see how it's just, it's subtle, but it's so awesome. Another one with that same texture and feeling. It must be some type of new formula that they're doing because I don't remember these type of glosses having that feeling to them. And this is one that I got in one of my Walmart boxes. It is the Almay Golden Goddess. I haven't been using this one as much, but I'm going to start, you know, I, I switch them up. I throw them in my bag. This is another beautiful one. This one has a very nice, pretty pink shift to it. And again, that same feeling, that same comfortableness, non-sticky, non-tacky gloss feeling that whatever they're doing with these formulas, they need to keep doing them because um, this is a very reasonable price. The Winky Lux is a decent, a little bit more than a drugstore price, but they need to keep it up whatever they have put into these products. Now this one is has seemed to have been very unpopular opinion. In my Casey Holmes Physicians Formula Collab box, it came with the perfume, which I love. It doesn't last long enough, so I have to continually put it on, but it smells beachy and coconutty, and I really do enjoy that. But it also came with one of the butter glosses. A lot of people said it was too glittery and too frosty. Maybe it's just me, but I happened to like it. It is so comfortable because it really feels like a bomb. It does show up peachy pink. You can barely see it. There you go. It's not glittery, but it is frosty. And I don't know. Everyone seems to dislike it. As you can see, I've been using it quite a bit, and, and I love it. Let's talk palettes. You know that this is definitely was going to be in my favorites category. I have been loving, loving this palette. This is the Moschino and Sephora collaboration. You can see some heavy duty dips in the shadows here. I have tried every single eyeshadow in this palette and I honestly have not found a problem with any of them. In my personal opinion, I've seen some reviews where they say the palette is terrible. I'm not sure how or why, but in my personal opinion, this palette is fantastic. I can get so many different looks with this palette. I did the pink, I did blue, I'm gonna do a purple, and I wanna do a green. You have everything, you can do every color story, and you can also do like um, just a natural brown, uh, smoky look if you want to. I don't know why people are picking on this, but again, we all have our own opinions. This is just my opinion, and in my opinion, I love this. Since we're talking about purchases of things that, you know when you feel really good that you wait to get something and you want something and you love it? It's the best feeling in the world, and that would have to apply to my Huda Beauty New Nudes palette. I waited for like the six months for the spring sale for me to get this, and I love this palette. Some of these shadows in here are so special. This palette now everyone complained about the concealer in here i kind of like the concealer because if i'm pulling out this palette i don't have to reach for an eye primer i can just use this concealer as an eye primer so mine hasn't gotten dirty or dusty like everyone is saying i i don't know but i haven't used every single shadow in here but i have used all of these special marbled foiled shadows and let me just let me just demonstrate 
that that's what kind of made me fall in love with this palette was those but I have one problem with the palette every time I pick it up I get so excited about all of them that I don't know what to do um, I think the mattes are creamy and blend beautifully I will say that although they say that the glitters do not need any type of primer. I disagree with that. They can be a little bit fall outy, if you know what I mean. They don't have that jelly texture to them. They are stunning glitters, one up here and one down here. But in my personal opinion, um, you will get some fallout if you do not use some type of a glitter primer. But they are stunning glitters. I love them i don't dip into them as much as the other shadows but this is another palette that i am so happy that i purchased because i know that i'm getting my money's worth out of it granted it is an expensive palette i'm not going to deny that i did get it on sale but i'm happy i love it i'm using it i'm adoring it and that's what you know i love makeup and when i get that much joy out of something and get it so excited it's like which ones do i want to use that's how i know i made a good purchase oh palettes i have a thing for palettes to me palettes don't fall into categories that i have to use up i do make it a habit of rotating my palettes so that i am enjoying all of my collection and not letting anything just sit there and not be loved but ColourPop and ColourPop just came out with a blue palette. Didn't I just do a video where I said I don't need a blue palette but when it's a $12 palette I may need that. I may need the watermelon. Well I shouldn't say need. Remember we don't need makeup. We don't these are not products we need. These are products that are luxuries that we enjoy. We need food, shelter, and water and, water, and a job. And that blue palette for $12, I might splurge on a blue palette. This is the Sweet Talk palette. This was their spring collection. First of all, the packaging is stunning. You've seen me use this in a tutorial. I can't stop talking enough about this because it's a special palette to me because it has all kinds of different textures. Of course, their mattes and their shimmers are their standard, which are beautiful. It has plenty of mattes to create transition shades. This is their typical shimmer shade, which again, they do very, very well. But it also has the two pressed glitters and the Super Super Shock Shadow in it. The Super Shock Shadow is most definitely just a topper. Sometimes wear it alone if I literally just want a sheer wash of color. I like it better as a topper to go on top of one of the matte shades. But again, it's up to you, it's your choice. These glitters, they have a different texture than the Huda Beauty glitters. But I still, with these as well, definitely wear glitter glue with them. Just in case, you don't want fallout, and the glitter glue just adds some extra security that you are not going to get any fallout. But again, with the mattes blend, it is a beautiful color scheme that you can go neutral or amp it up with the glitter and the Super Shock Shadow to make it a little bit more dramatic and beautiful. ColourPop, they release a lot of shadows and they release a lot of products, but they do good products. So if you want to talk me out of the blue palette down below, please feel free to go ahead and do so. Something else I have been truly enjoying are loose pigments. Loose pigments are not something I ever in a million years thought that I would enjoy. This is also from Kodi Kodiak. <laughs> I meant to say ColourPop and Zodiac, and it came out Kodiak. Let's start a new brand called the Kodiak brand. What do you know? This is the Kathleen Lights collection, her Zodiac collection. I didn't get all of the colors. There are many more that I want, but I'm like, all right, how many loose pigments can I possibly have? These are spectacular. You do get a lot of product, and I kind of wish, I mean, they're not, honestly, they're not expensive. They're, I think, $8. I would be, have been happy with half the amount, in my personal opinion, but I got the Aries color, which is just this or orange, orange, beautiful, shifty color, and they feel like little cloud puffs when you stick your finger into them. Uh, I can't describe it. It's just they're, they're fluffy. Now, these work okay dry, but the way I use them is most definitely wet. There we go, right here. 
it's hard to tell on the camera. That's with it dry. And I said, when it is wet, it looks, literally your eyelid looks wet and shiny and duochrome -y spectacular. I also got this type of mixing medium. I just ordered a some things from Smolder Cosmetics, which I'm going to do a video on, and they have these liquid drops that you mix into pigments, any pigment, to make it like a liquid eyeshadow. Greatest invention I've ever seen in my life. Now, of course, you know I had to get the purple, which is Sagittarius, and I find that the purple goes on a little bit better dry than the other, and that is because it is not as sparkly. It's just more shimmery, I guess, if you want to say, but I love both colors. I think the formula is fabulous. Granted, I want them all, but I'm not going to go that crazy, especially now that I just bought four of the Smolder Cosmetics, which, again, I love that mixing medium stuff is like amazing. So, and then I had to try the Jelly Much eyeshadows, which I would definitely like more of the Jelly Much eyeshadows. They are pretty much darn amazing. They look like this. I mean, they, they look like jelly, like this cool, sparkly, fantastic, amazing jelly. That's all I can describe it as. Look at this shifty, gorgeous, duochromy spectacularness that um, dries down um, very quickly. And once it dries down, it stays put, which is phenomenal. The texture of it is amazing. And these with the Sweet Talk palette or the pigments, ah, happiness at its best. So these are the Butter London Eye Pigments that I got in the kit from, where was it, from Nordstrom Rack. This has that same texture to it. These are a little bit wetter and not as moussey, if that makes sense. But these are also stunning and gorgeous. Here this is here. These are more, again, kind of uh, toppers. I always put a base coat on. But again, I have also worn them just kind of like I just need something quick and easy for just some a nice shimmer and sparkle. That's the thing I like about these is too, is you're not sitting there blending for hours. You kind of like throw them on and you give a little blend, throw something. I will put these on first and then just throw um, um, a neutral color in my crease and throw a little eyeliner on and you have a beautiful look. So I like these jelly type things. Everyone's doing them, but at least the ones who are doing them are doing them well. We just recently received the Alamar Cosmetics uh, Colorete palette. The blush palette, it came in four different shades. I got the lightest one. It does have a kind of creamsicle color, a deeper orangey color, and then this pink color. I have worn and enjoyed all three, hi Miss Kitten, colors. They are all three wearable colors. You can hardly see them. They are subtle when you want them to. They have a little bit of shimmer, but it's not like you're throwing this orange stripe on your face. I think people judge too quickly. They're like, oh, I can't wear that. But they're not trying them. I use a nice duo fiber brush when I just want that pretty wash of color. I use a more fluffy brush for a little bit more intense. This is a fabulous palette, and I, I sometimes disagree with other people's reviews, but again, we're all different. This Cover X palette, albeit the filthy mess that it is, is a fabulous palette. I love everything about this palette. I love the highlighters. They both work beautifully on my skin. I love the, the texture of them. They can either be subtle highlighters or you can build them up. So I think that's what works well for everyone. The blush is just a gorgeous shade. A pinky shade. This one is made for light skin tones. And then, of course, the bronzer is the perfect 
contour cool toned bronzer for me it is not too too warm i can use it but it is truly a wonderful contour color for me which is very very hard to find for me um the brightener if i want a more intense highlight i will throw that on top of the highlight to get more intense the finishing powder is a little sparkly some people will not enjoy that it is not a finishing powder that just has like a subtle sheen to it you do see a little bit some pieces of sparkle you're not going to see it on here it doesn't bother me because I like to sparkle it may bother some just throwing that out there this is not an inexpensive palette by the way just to warn you so that's why I'm so happy I have it because I would not have paid that amount of money for it shocking I know I really like this Coco Cabana. I just got it a few days ago in my Sephora Play. Yeah. I don't care if I smell like butter popcorn, if other people think I smell like butter popcorn. I freaking, I love this. I, on, I have heard a few people tell me in the comments that although they liked it in the jar, it did not work with their body chemistry, and I can totally get that. There are some perfumes that I smell on other people, and that I smell in store. I'm like, oh, I need that, and then I spray it on myself, and I smell like dog pee. So I completely understand that. But me, personally... I like the way my skin feels. It feels soft and I wear it before I go to bed because I like to smell yummy before I go to bed. Yeah, like I'm impressing my cats or something, you know? One more product that surprised me that I absolutely love. I don't know if I talked about this last time or not. If I did, I should have gone back and watched my video. But um, if I did, it's worth bearing talking about again. It's the Renewing Pumpkin Enzyme Gel Moisturizer from Bath & Body Works. The smell is freaking awesome. It is like, I don't know how to describe. It's not jelly texture, but it's a gel texture. And I didn't think I was going to like this. I got it on sale, but it's really nice, especially in the summer, because the gel kind of remains cool, if that makes any sense. It's very, very moisturizing, and it almost, I won't say it gives my skin a sheen, but it kind of does. And I'm hoping that they have this again so I can go buy it again. Let's talk about the stuff that didn't really work for me. This I got at the edit sale for Fab Fit Fun. It is from the company Black. I do like their under eye masks. This is the Meteor Shower Shimmer Scrub. It says made in space. That alone should have told me. <sighs> this is one of these where you have to like dip your hand in. I'm going to take some out and just show you. It is supposed to be like a sugar scrub. This is difficult because like when you're in the shower, how are you going to stick your wet hand in the bag? And Do you know what I mean? So that's what it looks like. The, the problem I had with this is I used it like every other body scrub I've ever used. I wet my skin in the shower. I took a scoopful and I rubbed it on my legs. And... Here's what happened next. It, how can I describe this? It looked like and felt like tar. It left this black streak across my leg. And I'm like, this, it was like tar. And then I'm like trying to scrub and that black streak is staying there and the sugar rinsed off, but still the black streak remained. And I'm like, okay. So like I took like a little bit more and tried to do scrubby scrubby. Then I tried soap, mm -mm. and I'm like, I have this black streak on my leg. So then I took one of my other body scrubs, and I'm scrubbing, trying to get this black streak off my leg, and it wasn't going anywhere. It almost felt like it, like the oil, it has oils, so it was like the water was beating up on top of it. It's like nothing else was penetrating this black tar oil slick that was on my shin. When I got out of the shower, I still had the black streak on my leg. It took like another shower to get rid of it. I don't know what in goodness name is in this, but it needs to stay in space is where it needs to stay. Weirdness. 
if you guys have this, please let me know your thoughts. I'd be really curious. Well, I forgot to talk about one thing that I actually do like. The only problem is that I have is that you run out too quickly. This is the Kapari Starry Eye Balm. I love this. It is so moisturizing. It's so wonderful for underneath my eyes. My issue with it is that they do not give you enough product for the price. I am almost done with it. I have totally hit pan on it. And this was $30. And for $30 to get that little product, as good as it is, unless it's half price, I could not buy it again. I think that it is absurd that they charge that amount of money for this little product. So if you're listening, Kapari, you're right. Think about that. Here's like a meh product. This is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea palette. I had several of these a, a while back, and there's nothing wrong with the formula. My problem is it's just, it's such a neutral palette. If you are a neutral lover and eyeshadow lover you will love these because even the shimmers you can really like wear them in your crease because they're really really subtle like this one in particular here looks beautiful in the crease the problem is you see the type of eyeshadows i wear so i don't pull for this very often because well this one is an awesome color uh, because I wear much bolder colors. But if you love neutrals, the formula, the blendability, and everything is beautiful. But, I mean, if you look at it, it's it's basically kind of monochromatic. You're not going to get very many adventurous looks out of it. I think the packaging is adorable and spectacular. So it is not a bad product at all. It's just not colors that I reach for. It's a great product. It's too neutral for me. That's the only caveat that I have. Now this one, I was so disappointed. I saw this in the store and they have two or three different ones. It is from I Heart Revolution. Is it I Heart Revolution, Makeup Revolution, Revolution Makeup? I, I can't keep track. This is, tell me what palette you think this looks like. I mean, come on. You know how they're into copying, right? This looks just like the Ciate London. Now I was going to do a dupe video on this, but I picked up the wrong one. This looks absolutely gorgeous in the, the palette itself, and I was so excited. Here's the issue. The shadows don't perform very well, especially this one. I wound up getting a very nice look at the end, but, okay, I'm swatching this, right? And you can already see, like, I'm getting some hard pan in there. The color payoff is not, is just, it's just not there. I mean, some of the colors are good. The thing is, I expected the Glitter Storm palette. Maybe that was the problem, that I had such high expectations. There's that pink one. From the Glitter Storm palette with their blendability and their beautiful pigmentation, this is a very lightly pigmented palette. I wound up with a gorgeous look. I actually got a lot of compliments at work. It doesn't have those true glitters, so it just has, like, the shimmers. This was $15, though. This was not that cheap. It wasn't like it was a $5 palette. 15 bucks is not inexpensive. And although I wound up with a pretty look, I had to work. I, I honestly had to work for it on the eyes. I think there, as much as I love the beautiful, pretty packaging, if you want a palette that has a little bit more of a subtle colors that aren't as bold and out there, then you might like this. I said they do have three different variations, one that looks identical to the Glitter Storm palette. I was going to, I said I was, I had bought it with the intentions of doing the dupe video. I, I picked up the wrong one, unfortunately, but for $15 and you, if you want bold eyeshadows, I think you can find better. This e.l.f. concealer, you know, all the people who got paid to talk about how it was a dupe for short. I said shard again. I'm just, I, let, can we just change the name to shard tape 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 slip? I give up. Anyway, this is not a dupe for anything uh, at all. This concealer sucks the life out of my skin. I use it for putting my crease as an eyeshadow primer. It is immediately, I mean, I put it on my hand and there's nothing creamy about it. It immediately feels drying and it makes my under eyes look dry, crepey, creasy, ancient. 
of course I will find a way to make this work if it was darker I could use it as a spot concealer for any blemishes or anything but of course it's too light for that I sometimes use it to highlight either my nose or my forehead or my cupid's bow but other than that this does not belong anywhere near my under eyes I don't know if you guys use it let me know what you think because maybe it's just me maybe it is but even though it's five dollars it, it's five dollars that doesn't work for me for its intended purpose so this is another thing that everybody raved over this is the no problem primer from touch and soul i'm not really thrilled with this this was a little bit drying on my skin i don't necessarily like the way my makeup went on top of it i'm using it and and it's okay definitely not my favorite primer i don't get the hype I, it's very silicone-y it's got like a pink, um, slight underhue to it. It doesn't show up on the skin. It does blur, absolutely blurs, but it feels drying on my skin for some reason where I need something to feel moisturizing. It dries down to almost like a powdery finish, which is maybe I don't like why I don't like putting my liquid foundations on top of it. So I'll use it, maybe spot doing things for like some blurring effects, but on the whole, eh, you know what I mean? So that is it, my friends. Thank you for sitting through this rather long video. I'm going to try to edit it down as much as possible so that it is not 19,000 hours long. But I would love to know your thoughts on all of these products. What are your products that you've been loving or not liking this month? You know, I enjoy talking to you guys in the comments so very much. If you guys wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up and or subscribing, I would love you for it. But whatever part of the world you're in on around, I hope you have an amazing day and an amazing week. And I'll talk to you soon, my friends. Much, much love. Bye.